Hello and welcome back to Artisan Electrics. Thanks for joining us once again for an exciting electric vehicle charging episode. We are here at Caribbean Blinds. We're fitting four Zappi chargers and it's a little bit different today because we're fitting them on pedestals, which is something that we don't do very often. We're going to be fitting them in these parking spaces behind me and there's a bit of fun getting the cables over there. So it should be an interesting little job for you guys to watch. If you enjoy our videos, don't forget to hit a thumbs up as you guys always do. Thanks for the thumbs up squad who always do that. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. It helps the channel to grow and you'll get more great content from us. Let's get into the job. So what we've got here, we've got four parking spaces. So four Zappi chargers are going in. These are the type two tethered seven kilowatt chargers that we're installing here. And they're going on these My Energy pedestals. So the pedestal is like a stand, a post that the charge points mount on. It's gonna go in the middle of this, uh, these two parking bays. And then there's another one gonna go in the middle of those two parking bays over there. Now the tricky part on this job is that we've got concrete. So there's concrete pavement, concrete parking. It's all very much lots of concrete. And obviously we've got to get our cables here somehow. So we're gonna be using the Hilti chaser today, not to chase walls, but to chase pavement. <laughs> And uh, it'll be interesting because it'll be my first time using it on proper concrete. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. We're gonna basically chase along this concrete to create sort of a little groove where we can run the cables in. And then they've got groundworks contractors coming in afterwards who are gonna cement back over it. So it'll kind of all blend in. Over to here, we've got a bit of soil. So we've got John helping us today and Corey and they're busy just preparing the cable route out here. We're gonna run a trench along here behind these curb stones. And then we've got another pedestal to go here. So again, two charge points on one pedestal. In fact, I'll show you what the, the pedestals look like. So these are them, they're pretty heavy things. They're like basically a steel girder. So it goes like that. You've got these covers to kind of make it look pretty and the charge points go one on either side. These are tethered so they can just rock up, unwind and plug in. They've got two Mercedes EQCs on order, which should be arriving soon. Really nice company cars. So obviously they're gonna to need to charge those and then they're gonna have a couple of spares for future growth or for customers to be able to use. And the distribution board is inside over there. So I'll show you that. We follow our cable route through the trench to here. And then again, we've got concrete pavement so we're going to have to try and chase some of this out come across the pavement and then we've just removed a little bit of this planter here so that we've got a gap and we're going to run a cable tray up the wall drill through the wall to above the suspended ceiling on the other side we've got six uh, cables to come in here so we've got four power cables one for each zappy six mil three core steel wire armored cables and then we've got two data cables we're going to run a cat 5e armored cable to each pair of zappies for the CTs so that they can measure the current that's going on in the building, how much power is being taken from the grid and we can put a grid limit if needed. Uh, although it's quite a big supply here, so it's probably not necessary, but it's always good to have that just in case. So I'll show you inside. Welcome to the toilets. Hopefully nobody's in. Right, okay. What we've done, we've taken open the suspended ceiling in here. And that bit of wall that I just showed you on the other side is the wall where we're gonna run the cable tray up. So literally the other side of the wall, that's where that planter was. And here we're gonna run a cable tray on the other side up, drill through, and now there's a steel beam here. So we hop over that steel beam, and then we're gonna run a cable tray on the ceiling here, all the way along through towards where the distribution board is, which I'll show you. We'll drill through this wall as well, and then into this little section so we'll have to run through here through the ceiling and the distribution board is here so very handy for us there is this distribution board here which is not actually being used it's completely switched off at the moment it's for some old heating circuits which are no longer in use so we're going to repurpose this install four new circuits in this distribution board and this is fed by this cable here which goes to an mccb in this MCCB panel next door. So I'll show you that. Here we go. So we've got this MCCB panel and this one is the one that we're using, which is marked as spare at the moment. It's a 100 amp, 
three-phase supply going to that board, which is perfect. It gives us plenty of capacity. And then in here, we've got our main incoming supply. It's a PME supply, protective multiple earthing or TNCS. So normally you would have to install earth rods and pen fault detection devices and all that stuff. But for this, because we're installing zappies, we don't need to. It's just everything's built into the zappy. It does say three times 100 amp on here. So it's actually, it looks like it's only a 100 amp three phase supply for the whole building anyway. And we're going to run our CTs here so that we can monitor the amount of power that's being used by the building. And then if there's any chance that charging the vehicles would overload the main fuse and blow the main cutout fuse, the zappies will ramp down by themselves to avoid blowing the main fuse. So that's another advantage of why we fit my energy zappy charging points. That's what we're going to do. Corey and John are sort of prepping outside. I'm going to just start in here just running some tests on these boards. I want to make sure that they're safe for us to connect to. And we're going to have to reconfigure that board a little bit in there just to make some space. So it's 20 to 10 and I'm starving. Don't, don't have too much. Right, I've proved dead, um, but we've got a little bit of an issue here, which I've brought Corey in to show him because he's going to be kind of running this job. To be honest, I want Corey's professional opinion anyway, because Corey has more experience than me when it comes to commercial installations like this. Uh, basically, what I was hoping is we could reuse this old board, but if you have a look up at the top of the board, you will see there's a bit of burnage has happened on the neutral bar. Can you oh, see yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not very Because I was kind of wondering, like, why is that board not being used anyway? Seems a bit weird that there's a whole three-phase board just not in use. It looks like the neutral bar is fairly burnt. It's a bit, a bit of a concern for me to connect to that existing installation. So what I was thinking is, okay, let's rip that board out and let's just put a small three-phase board in its place, a new one. But I've just done some, te I thought I'll test the feed cable coming in just to make sure it's safe to connect to. And I've got zero mega ohms between the red phase and the yellow phase. I would take this off. I, I would take them, drop them out of that because maybe this isn't working maybe properly. Maybe the main switch is yeah. budged. Yeah, it's weird because there was a low-ish insulation reading between red and yellow phases. Yeah. And the CPC as well, but it kind of, I, I wiggled the cable around a bit and the reading got better. So I think maybe the cores were just pressing against the gland a little bit. So Maybe it's either it's... a problem with the MCCB. It could well be. I wouldn't want to switch that on. <laughs> no, exactly. Well, that's what I thought, because I originally my plan was, oh, I'll switch it on and then I'll do a loop test. And I thought, uh, better not, just in case there's a problem with it. Yeah, that is why you insulation resistance between phases. Exactly. Boys and girls. How bizarre. Okay. I'm getting seven between yellow and earth, between yeah. the armour and... Maybe it's damaged. I mean, if they were running loads of heaters off that... I mean, could be that it sort of melted the cable or something, but... That had got to be running hot. Surely yeah. this is the correct size for that MCCB. Surely the MCCB would blow. Yeah. So I think um, we probably need to have a look in that MCCB panel, really. Oh, unless it's this one up here. Yeah, Jordan, it's this. Ah, has it been disconnected? It's been disconnected. It's been dropped out. Ah, oh, right. There we go. Yeah, because the armour is touching against there as well, so that'll be why. Yeah, we're clear now. Ah, uh, right, OK. That's just a ton. I think that neutral bar is just probably either a ton of resistive loads and a loose connection. Okay, so let's do this. So, definitely going to put this on for this. I'll get you started and then I'll stand back for you. Right. So we've got the cover off this board. I'll put that there so you can see what's going on. It's a bit of a mess, this, this board really. Full of you know, they've kind of added a bit of slack inside the board, but it's just, they've just cable tied it all together. I think we're just going to have to put a new sub main in and a new DB uh, in that cupboard. So we've decided we're going to rip out that old board. We're going to put a brand new dedicated EV board in. We're going to put a new feed cable from that board to the MCCB panel so that we're working with a brand new installation. We're going to rip that old board out now and then prep everything and start getting a new board in. I've got to go to the wholesalers. Luckily, we're literally a walking distance from the wholesaler. That's amazing, that. Absolute quality tool. 
I would never have planned this job with chasing through concrete if I hadn't, if I didn't know about the Hilton Chaser, but such a beast. I mean, cut the stones and it's perfectly. It's so smooth, isn't it? It's beautiful. Yeah. The sharpest blade, uh, the, the longest lasting, hardest blades on the market. And it shows. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that's taken a bit of life out of them. Uh, I mean, they're designed, this thing's designed to be able to basically be able to chase concrete all day long. Really? Yeah, it's it's what it's made for, really. We want hilty ones of these. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hilty, send us some more gear, we love it. Amazing stuff. Right, we got ourselves one of these. Luckily, we are literally five minutes walk from Edmondson's, so we've uh, popped around there, got ourselves a three-phase board. Unfortunately, they didn't have any like Schneider ones or anything on the shelf so we've got this Europa one but it seems pretty solid seems like good enough quality it's got plenty of spare ways for future expansion as well if they ever want to add more charge points later so I think it's a good thing to do we're going to run a new 25 mil four core steel wire armored cable from there to that MCCB that's spare liven that up and then it'll be like a brand new installation so it's going to be great, it's just a bit more work than we expected, but it is what it is. It's the real life of an electrician. Once he's got all those burnt cables out of the way, then we'll try and mount this new board up. So this is the Hilti Chaser. You've seen it in other videos, but we're putting it properly to the test now because we're chiseling up all this concrete and it's got all hardcore and stones nastiness in it. Um, but it's just eaten through it like butter. Honestly, I'm really, really impressed. So uh, what I'm thinking is we're going to chase it along there, drill in an angle across into our chase and then run it straight up and in because I, I don't want to chase all of that out. Um, all right, do you mind just whacking the move on, please, mate? Okay, so Jordan very kindly bought us quite a big lunch, so <laughs> we've just finished our lunch. We're going to start carrying on with this chasing. It's very slow progress because there's loads of these stones. These stones take ages to cut through. The concrete, it cuts through like butter, but the stones, it takes just a little while longer. But it's starting to rain, so we're just moving everything out under the cover. Fortunately, they are a business that sells blinds and covers, so they've got lots of them. So we'll get all the stuff moved. So I brought the board outside, it's just easier. We've got more space, we can work. I'm gonna try and gland this main armoured up, cut the holes now for these smaller armoured. So we've got these four, six mil armoured coming out. Now, these are the glands that they supply, and they supply them with these little banjos, but I just don't like these. I mean, they're technically these are used to earth the sheath of the armour armoured cable. We're using a three core armoured anyway so we've got an earth in the cable but just to eat earth the steel wire armoured. I mean we're using a metal box anyway so it's going to get earth continuity through the metal box so let me know if you think that this is actually pointless. I just hate fiddling around with these anyway so I'm going to use these which is the earthing nuts. I think they're piranha nuts or something. Various companies make them. I think SWA make. Yeah these ones are from SWA Limited and they're really good because they've got these teeth there's differing opinions about this. Some people say you, you tighten them up to scratch the paint off, then you flip them over and then you tighten them up again. I just tighten them up once because those teeth will grip into the metal and they'll give you a really good solid reading. And then you've got this screw in the side so you can just um, put your ring crimp on there and then run a flying lead to your earth bar on the consumer unit. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this is instead of using banjos, I'm just going to be using four of these um, piranha nuts or whatever they're called, like that. So I just mark my holes so that I can turn all of these without hitting each other, because if you do them too close together, you, you can't get them tightened up. So I've just marked the holes with a Sharpie like that. By the way, tool of the day, one of the tools of the day is this. Um, these Armeg Accelerate bits are absolutely brilliant for this. They cut through metal so easily, even like quite thick steel sheeting and stuff, you can cut through it. And they've got this little spring that usually pops this little bit off. Really good little drill bits. I've got this new tool that I'm going to try out today, which is the Nipex Tube... What is it called? Tubix. Apparently this is really good for stripping armoured. So you know, uh, if you've watched the channel regularly, that we usually use the CK Armour Slice tool, which but apparently this is even better. So you just slide it closed like that. I think then you just tighten it up a bit and then run it around. 
tighten it a bit more. Oh, that does feel nice, actually. That is um, pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, it's made for pipe, but some clever electrician was like, oh, I wonder if that would work on armoured. Yeah, it's, re it's cutting through that really, really nice. I just, I'm just scared of going too far, you know? We're nearly through. So I'll undo that and then you can just click, you know, just click it off. So it's super easy. Don't even need to bend the armoring back. You can just, look at that. That is awesome. And look at that finish on there. I love it. We don't need much length on this. That's why I've not taken it back very far because we're, all we're doing is going into the main switch. Now, the thing that I always struggle with is this part is that I don't want to strip it so far back that the armoring is visible outside the shroud. So you've got to kind of just get the right length. That is beautiful. You beauty. So I always just tighten them by hand to get them going because you don't want to cross thread these otherwise you've got a real problem on your hands. And then these measuring spanners. <laughs> Whoever said that was a measuring spanner. <laughs> you, you absolute measuring spanner. And believe it or not, this is how much of a domestic sparks I am. This is the biggest armoured I've terminated in quite a long time. 25 mil. Ooh. I know some of you guys out there, this is like a baby for you. Corey's little trick. Have you got a cable tie I can use? I am just about to grab you one. Look what the concrete is doing to our chisel bit. It's completely wearing it down. It's so hard. So I'm so impressed that the Hilti's actually held up against it. It's like wearing out all of our bits. Corey's little trick, which I'd never really knew about, but to put a cable tie around this, and then it just stops the bedding, I think it's called. The inner sheath is also good. It stops the bedding of the cable from kind of um, coming open too far. You've got to gently score around without cutting into the cables. So there we go. One armoured terminated. Places. Right, there, one minute. Let me cut all these you've got like cable ties because I'm slicing you. myself to pieces on these. Yeah. It's a real thing, people. Cut cable ties flush, please. If you're going to do two things today, tell the people that you love that you love them, and cut your cable ties flush for me. Thank you. <laughs> Yay! Well done, boy. There we go. You're always calling Jordan a messy pup, but. <sighs> That's all right, this is just pure... Who's the messy pup now? This is pure chrysolite asbestos, there's nothing to be concerned about. Okay, so we've wrestled with this cable and managed to get it through the wall. Decided to drill a new hole rather than trying to run it up and through the old hole. Much easier. So that's good, we've got a nice swooping bend on that. I've just got to fix the board back now. So we've, uh, I think we've pretty much finished for the day now. What I'm doing at the minute, I've just put the zappy on a plug top and... I've downloaded the Zappi's latest firmware onto this up at the patch panel upstairs. It's just to speed up the process because sometimes it takes ages and obviously we've got four of them. I don't want this to slow us down tomorrow like it did at Will's job. It's pretty much done now, it's on 97%. Um, so that all of these tomorrow are ready to go. We can literally just install them, wire them up. We don't have to worry about linking them all and all the rest of it. So I've set this one here as the master and I'm going to do all the others as slaves. We've not actually run a single cable yet. We've, we've put the new board in um, and rerun the leg for the submain. We've chased out all the concrete, drilled through the curbs and things. You know those days where you feel like we've worked hard all day and you can't actually really see much that you've done. It feels like you've not really done anything. It's been one of those days. Thankfully, we've had uh, Johnny Boy with us. It's been a huge help. Otherwise, we, don't, we definitely wouldn't have got as far as we have today. So yeah, it's been pretty good, especially with the unexpected um, submain change. I wasn't expecting to have to do that. So, got a lot to do.
We are done for the day. What a day. Chasing through concrete is great fun. As you can tell from the guys, they've been re really working hard today. They've done a great job. They've really smashed it. So we've got a great team. Um, really proud of them. We've just tidied up. So as you can see, we've kind of like left minimal dirt and dust. We just always try to leave the site tidy at the end of the day if we can. And we're ready to smash it tomorrow with cabling, connecting up the DB, connecting up the zappies, mounting the pedestals. Yeah, I reckon it'll be a long day tomorrow, but we'll get it done and it's going to be a nice finish in the end. So we'll see you tomorrow, maybe in a part two. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. See you soon.